that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy when we keep in honor of the risen Lord and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. We ask this through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in <coughs> unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet paid him homage. <coughs> Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly, is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has the The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves, is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, to his disciples as the father loves me so I also love you remain in my love if you keep my commandments you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends 
if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you. Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There is a wonderful connection that we rarely get between the Gospel and the second reading. The second reading is an epistle, a sermon, a homily, given by St. John the Apostle. In the first reading, we have words that Christ spoke, and St. John the Apostle heard them and wrote them down for us. And then maybe 30 or 40 years later, he gives us a homily on the words that our Lord spoke. So in both cases, it's St. John telling us what he heard and then telling us how to understand what our Lord said. Because the subject matter, what our Lord was speaking about here, the subject matter is love. Love, unfortunately, in English, is a problem for us. In other languages, there are many different words for love, especially the ones I'm familiar with, the Romance languages, there's a word for love between a husband and wife. There's a word for love between members of a family. There's another word for love that expresses patriotism, love of the country. Then there's another word for love that describes uh, the liking of a food or a thing. So there are many different words. But in English, we only got one word, love, L-O-V-E. And we use that word to cover everything. A couple that's been married for 60 years and gone through thick and thin together, how do they describe their relationship? Love. How do I describe my feeling for chocolate ice cream? Love. <laughs> the same word, and you say, wait a minute, it's not the same thing that we're talking about. So actually, this is very helpful. Maybe our Lord knew that all these English-speaking people would need help defining what really love is about. And that's what the words our Lord spoke were about. He's defining love for us. And he's telling us, Use me as an example of that love. Use what I did to teach you what love really means. For us as Catholics, the symbol of our Catholic faith is the crucifix, not the empty cross, or not what you see today in a, in a lot of the newer churches, this Superman Christ on the cross with the cape flying off. That's, that never was our symbol as Catholics of our faith. Our symbol is Christ hanging on the cross. And he tells us that. My father, he says, the beginning of the gospel, asked me to come into the world. He asked me to save human beings from their sins. And I was to come into the world for 33 years and do this. Because my father asked me, I did it. I said yes. And it meant a terrible sacrifice. 
It meant I had to give up the happiness of heaven and come into a world where everyone argued with me. At best, they misunderstood me, but most of them just argued with me. I had to come into a world where I was God and they insulted me. I had to come into a world where eventually I was totally rejected. My gift of salvation was thrown back at me and they nailed me to a cross. Because I loved my father, I did what he asked me. I didn't say no. Because I loved you, human beings, I died on the cross so your sins would be forgiven. Love as God shows it to us. Love as the symbol of our faith, the crucifix, reminds us. It's not a word. Love is the deed. It's the doing of love. Sacrifice is the doing of love. And the ultimate symbol of love, of our faith, Christ hanging on the cross, he is doing the things of love for us. He is sacrificing himself. In a relationship, husband, wife, parents, children, what is the language of love that they speak to each other? It's not just the word. The word fails. It's too small for the concept. The language is sacrifice. When I love someone, first I have to sacrifice and learn to know what makes them happy. And that means I have to go out of myself. And it's not just about me telling the, everyone around me what makes me happy. I have to take the time to learn what makes them happy. And then I sacrifice. Uh, I put aside my own thoughts, my own wants, my own needs. I put aside what I want in order to do what you need to be happy. This is the language of love. It's sacrifice. What does it look like? It looks like in a marriage between husband and wife, I don't want to spend Sunday afternoon with your family. That's the last thing that I want to do in the world. You know what? I, I understand it's a special occasion. And you don't want to go there alone. And I don't want you to go there alone. So I'm going to put on a smiley face. And I'm not going to whine and cry about it. I love you. I do this for you. I give you these hours because I know it will make you happy. When you do that, do you really need the word? The word is too small. You've done the sacrifice that tells you of love. What does it look like between parents and children? It means sitting through endless softball games and dance recitals because I want to know because you need this, and I love you, and I do it for you. It means on the part of children, understanding. Sometimes they ask me to do things I don't want to do. I don't like doing this. But my father asked me. My mother asked me. I'll do it because I love them. That's my gift. Not the word, not a card, but the reality. You ask me to do this. I don't want to do this. I'll do it because I love you. The language of love is spoken in sacrifice in any relationship with someone that I love. Staying with that image, love between people who love each other. If I love someone, I want to be with that 
her sake. There's a comfort and enjoyment we get from being with people we really love. They lift us up, just being with them. Um, in a family, to get together, there's a certain calmness and uplifting of soul that comes from being together. Talking to the person that I love. If something is going on, if there's turmoil, or there's any sort of drama going on in my life, just to tell someone who I love and cares about me, maybe to get their opinion on what's going on, but just telling them. It doesn't make it go away. It doesn't heal it. Nothing is going to do that. But however, I told the person I loved, they listened, they assured me of their love and support, and I feel better for it. I need to talk to the people that I love. This is not just a word. So that now we understand what our Lord is teaching us in relationships. Love is not a warm fuzzy. It, it, it's not a, an emotion that brings warmth to my heart and a tear to my eye and I say, oh, I love this person. No, no, that's step one of a million steps to come. And the other steps are all spoken in the sacrifice I make for the person I love. And our Lord tells us in today's gospel, look at my sacrifice for you. And that will teach you what sacrifice is about. But let's take this to another level. Let's take it to the level of our relationship with God, my faith and how I live my faith, which is my relationship with God. I could easily say the warm, fuzzy words, I love you, God. But do I do the things loving God means? He tells us, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. I made it so easy for you to know what pleases me. I gave you 10 commandments. You'll keep them because I ask you to. And by the way, they're for your own good. They'll keep you in peace in this world and bring you to heaven. But if you love me, you won't argue with me. You won't try to explain them away. You'll do them because you trust me and you'll do them because you love me. And love isn't just a warm, fuzzy feeling or a, a word. You'll do the things of love. Example, third commandment. Christ asked us, worship me on the Sabbath. Come to me and worship me on the Sabbath. Why do I have to do that? Think of it this way. Parents, children, God said, I'm your father in heaven. Parents want to see their children. You want to be in the presence of those you love. If one of them is missing from the table at a holiday, something is missing in that holiday because one of them wasn't able to come home. To be together is very important. We need that physical contact as human beings. God says, I'm your father in heaven. I ask you, come to me each week. Come to my house, let me heal the wounds of your soul this past week from all that life beat you up with. Let me nourish you with Holy Communion so that you will find strength to go back into the world and carry whatever burdens life is dishing out to you at the moment. Come to me as a father, I want you to come to my house. And now let's be very plain. More people than not, and people we know, answer that with, God, I'm too busy to come to you. Um, God, I'll be in Costco 
on Sunday morning. They got a great sale. God, you can find me there. Uh, I'll be in your presence there. No, that's not the same thing. That's using the word love and then not being willing to do the things of love. No, God, I'll come to you first. I'll go to Costco afterwards. That's the thing of love, not just the word of love. Because what am I saying? You know, God, I would like to be with you for all eternity in heaven. Just not now. I'm too busy now. Then I'll have time for you. If I were God, you wouldn't like my answer to that. Uh, no, now I've got no time for you. Goodbye. Um, prayer. Don't we need to talk to the people that we love? If a day goes by and I haven't talked to the people that I live with, the people that I love, don't we need that communication with each other? The day should not go by that I haven't prayed to God, that I close the door of my room and for 40 seconds, thank God for the gift of the day, tell him I'm sorry if I offended anyone, ask him to keep me alert to the needs of the people around us. I think that was just 35 seconds. That would be enough. But when I do that, I'm not just saying, I love you, God. I'm doing the things of love. Christ spoke words. Christ gave us instructions on what love is about. And kind of as, as English-speaking people, we need these instructions so that we don't settle for a word that means everything big, everything little, everything in between, and probably nothing. That usually gets re reduced to a warm fuzzy. No, he's telling us, I want you to imitate my love and my love is spoken in sacrifice, in what I am willing to do for the one that I love. And I want you then, he says, to love each other with a love that's willing to tolerate and forgive, a love that's willing to be patient and understanding, a love that is willing to sacrifice the needs of self for the needs of others. How well he reminds us of the nature of love. And then he tells us, if you love me, go do that. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father of my maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God, true God, begotten of me, and of the Father, to whom all things were made, for us and for our Blessed be the kingdom of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now, forever, for ages, 
unto endless ages. Amen. Amen. The response to each petition will be, Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have turned from the love of Christ and for those who neglect the worship of God, let us pray to the Lord. For this community and for every town and land and for those who with faith live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the protection and well-being of our servicemen and women throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick of the parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deceased family and friends, and for the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, help, save, pity, protect us who call upon you in faith. For we do rely on the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, imploring Saint Gennaro, all the saints. We commend ourselves, each other, our whole lives. To Christ our God, to thee be glory for ages unto endless ages. Amen. Amen. This Thursday, May 9th, is the solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord, the Holy Day of Obligation. Please see the bulletin for next times and note that the parish center will be closed in observance of this holy day. The Rosary Society will have their bake sale today from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the parish center. Mother's Day cards are available in the rear of the church. together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, an integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, even heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn 
of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember brothers and sisters fallen asleep in hope of resurrection. All who died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs 
to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, and hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are as now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. the supper of the Lamb. Lord. O body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life.
almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament. Pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, for we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymns number 752. Mm -hmm.